Uh, Pebbles, you need to turn around, dude. Turn around. There we go. But anyways, back to the original point. Flint Beastwood picked and rushed himself a Null Stone, and because of that, he survived so many extra team fights that he really shouldn't have, and just got super farmed and just blew everyone away late game. So yeah, you say, mm. you know, not everyone can stack survivability, but sometimes it really makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah, you got me there, but I generally don't think that the Nolson is a is a bad item. It's actually pretty, you know, underrated on carries in my opinion. But um, I just don't like it as much on agility carries, especially if you don't have really much trouble surviving. Then I don't think it's very well worth the pickup. But I think it's it's reasonable to an, to a very large extent, so it's okay. Well, speaking of uh, you know those silver bullets and all that, we did have uh, that witch slayer get caught out in the forest. Valkyrie ult came through again, but silver bullet to the face. Flint goes goes down, does go down to three hero gank in the mid. Again, a lot of mobility afforded by this team so far, doing them well. But Forsaken Archer level 14, Forsaken Archer just blows away the competition at this point, and she has now finished up that null stone of hers. So we'll have to see how effective she can make use of it. I hope that Forsaken Archer will actually participate in some team fights because uh, thus far all she's done is whenever KDE actually started um, a team fight or something happened, Forsaken Archer was pushing towers, which is a good thing. But if your whole team dies, then that's just not good. And we see Pebbles really pulling off his one-man show that he gets when he hits those crucial levels and he gets a portal key. He just insta-gives all the squishy heroes. And because his combo only requires a 20-second cooldown, he can do it all day long, not you know having to wait for long cooldowns on ultimates or anything. Well, he definitely did it very well to that Voodoo Jester. Really did not expect that. But, but they did throw down that Ward of Revelation uh, KD Gaming, so they have to be very careful about that kind of play in the future. But the future is still far off. We're sitting at 19-15 in favor of Pyro, so they've actually taken the kill lead again, but still it comes down to these towers. Towers are being pushed left, right, and center, mostly thanks to that Forsaken Archer and those skeletons of hers. So Pyro still has to be very on guard with their lane. Yeah, definitely, and KD are still maintaining that gold lead, even though they lost the experience advantage, that Forsaken Archer single-handedly, you know, keeps on expanding that gold lead by just farming like crazy. And I'm not sure whether that is a good choice, I mean, Forsaken Archer is definitely a strong carry, and of course he's a strong farmer, but you obviously want to make good use of this, you know, farm. And if she's just farming and pushing, I don't think that's the very best use that you can put to her. Well, you got to remember, every hero kill is gold distributed amongst the team. So she's actually helping yeah, out her teammates by, you know, putting on a lot of pressure in the different lanes, as well as distributing money to, you know, the not so far in folks. So, like she's sitting at over 400 gold a minute. The next closest to her is still her team, Black, on that. Uh, sorry, Flint Beastwood, and he's sitting at, you know, just a little bit over 300 with Semiju on that Valkyrie. We don't have anybody like that right now on the Legion. And, I mean, a lot of that can be attributed to the, all the extra towers down. We have three extra towers down on, on Legion's side. Yeah, most definitely. And that is what the truth about this game is that many people, is like, we see, I've seen quite a few games now that one team takes the hero kill advantage, but the other team just manages to hold on to the game and push down towers. And that is the crucial thing. You want to kill the sacrificial shrine, you want to kill the racks, and if you can get those racks, then you know, you win the game nonetheless. Even It doesn't matter how many kills you got and how many kills you haven't. When the racks fall and when the sacrificial shrine or world tree falls, then you lose. So pushing is really an underrated aspect. And I got to give you that. Forsaken Arch is doing actually a pretty good job at it. It's really reflecting in her experience as well. Now 15, still staying ahead of that Wretched Hay who's just sitting at 14. And I mean, the farm, the d gold difference is just really phenomenal at this point. Forsaken Archer already has that Null Stone with those treads. Voodoo Jester has afforded himself, you know, some boots, pa mana, su mana, battery. I almost said mana supply. <laughs> and he's been doing a lot of warding around as a Witch Slayer. Not so much. He's also been doing some wards. But Flint, look at Flint. Already that Geometer's Bane. And uh, it's, you know, t not even 24 minutes in yet. Yeah, and of course you do, you got to remember that Valkyrie is also a strong hero and she's picking up that Firebrand and the Mighty Blade now, so she's going to work towards the um, Frostbrand. 
towards Frostburn. Yeah, the typical agility carry round, uh, route that we see nowadays. And she's another semi-carry type of hero, so it's going to be very interesting if the carries on the um, at Legion side, namely um, Fresh Attack as the semi-carry and, of course, Dog Lady as the main carry can hold you know, back against those three strong, strong carries by the Hellborn. Especially considering that Dark Lady's farm still is not phenomenal by any means. It's still right. She's still not phenomenal. Now she's you know dancing with the devil, so to speak. Uh, what's happening with Valkyrie? Valkyrie again. Oh, she's not gonna get out of that. I mean, I think I've seen four attempts now on that Valkyrie where she just leaps away and just you know uh, smacks her bottom as she runs away from that help, uh, Legion team, saying na 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 boo. -boo. But I don't know why everyone. I don't know why the Legion keep insist on going in on this Valkyrie after four in a row. They finally get her simply because of an extra auto attack after uh, she was able to land off that stu uh, that leap. But this is you know great examples of why Valkyrie is you know perfectly suited for those solo lanes, those hard lanes where survivability is very key. Her leap is just phenomenal. But what you also have to say is that the Legion had. Four very easy opportunities to go in on Valkyrie because otherwise they wouldn't have. I mean, she managed to survive um, three times, I think, but she died in the end. And if she keeps on getting, you know, getting caught in those positions, she's eventually gonna die more often. And that is, of course, nothing that you want to happen. So definitely, Valkyrie needs to watch her positioning now because if she screws that up a lot, then, you know, that's gonna lead to no good. Hey, look, take a quick look at the current gold count of Dark Lady. Yeah, just look at it. 240, and it's the 25 minute mark, and she has not picked no, no. up one the single. Gold. What? How much gold she the has gold. stockpiled? 4 4K, gold. okay. She has really brought up her farm. 243 gold a minute. But she's sitting on it. What is she waiting for? She just wants to buy it all in one go? Because it is now mm. past that 25 minute mark. We have no sign whatsoever mm -hmm. of that uh, rune dax now she did just spend 1200 of it now no she didn't that's a lie she still has 4300 yeah. like i i assume she's going for the rune dax but maybe now she's finally going to put it to good use um i'm not sure because she that they know that they need to make something happen very soon all. that they need the dark lady she picked up a and shrunken i would dude. that's what she did yeah i was i was just going to say that probably be the reason well I'm what she's going to do Forgive me. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna say that she's gonna pick up the shrunken head now because that makes her just so much more useful with the uh, extra survivability that it grants. That she's actually gonna be able to participate in those team fights, and that's really important for her team right now. If they are gonna face off a forsaken archer that is so incredibly well farmed, as well as a, as a strong flint beast would, if he ever decides to participate in the fight, and. Um, so the the shrunken head definitely makes a lot of sense. She's gonna she's gonna have to farm a lot though to make up for the the loss of the rune dax. Well, I don't know. She really didn't perform very well at this fight that we just saw happening. So we just lost three pyro members to only that witch slayer. And she kind of she went in. She got caught down down to half health. Andromeda actually had to sacrifice herself to save Dark Lady. And then she just came back in with her shrunken head and still had to run away. So overall, I, I don't know, that wasn't very impressive to me at any rate. Yeah, she's not gonna be like uber duper insta-giving people that she normally does late game. And this is not late game, we gotta remember that. But a shrunken head just gives her some presence rather than none. Which she has without without a shrunken head or without a rune axe. And um, even though she could have picked up the rune axe, it would definitely have been a, a viable pickup. I'm not. I I don't necessarily disagree with the shrunken head, um, because it just gives you so much more, you know, survivability. Blah blah. blah all I talked about before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nah, I don't know. To me, I I just don't see it. I guess. Yeah, she's gonna. The point is about a rune dax. So you get it gives you a lot of damage and it works really well with your charging strikes and everything. So the lady definitely profits from it. But what it really gives you is you have to spend less time farming for the same amount of gold. So what do you mean? She can still achieve a very strong farm. She just has to spend more time 
actually farming rather than participating in team fights or applying pressure to the enemy team so that if she if she gets the time to do so that is just you know that's going to work out for her team because um there are so much more stronger damage item than the than the rune axe if she picks up rift charge next or something like that well the rune axe as you said i mean it enables her to do as you know get 100 gold every let's say 10 seconds instead of taking 100 gold every 25 I mean, that, that's the advantage with it. I mean, you spend money to make money. That's always a general guiding principle in this world. But if she spent all that money for the rune dax, it would really come back a lot quicker with uh, than without it. But, uh, I mean, they, they did not want to do that. Maybe she will be participating a lot more in the team fights. That's why she took it. Or maybe she just feels like she's getting edged out and really wants the survivability aspect. So, yeah. One of the We're going to see how it, turns it, turn, how it turns out anyway, so... We can talk about it later when we see how the the pickup affected her. Well, she didn't pick up any of those kills. She did get two assists for them, but they those were two very squishy heroes, to be fair. So now goes the Valkyrie ult. I'm not too sure. Oh, so close to getting away from that. But that pod would have sealed the deal. And now Congor is just uh, regening health like uh, the monkey he is. This should be a very easy pickup for Team Pyro as they're just going to sit here. But actually, they might even pick up another kill with Witchler as he gets tossed down. What a great toss there by that Pebbles. And this should be a quick free to uh, token uh, for who? Pebbles or for the Dark Lady? Um, at this point, most likely for the Dark Lady. Yep, indeed. She put down her yeah. hatchet. So. Yeah, most likely. That makes the most sense. Pebbles is quite beefy because of his insane strength. Uh, not insane, but very strong strength gain. And, you know, at this level, he level has quite decent armor as well, especially picking up that plate mail. So that's going to definitely help her out a lot. But what I don't like is that KD Gaming, even though they had a strong lead in the beginning, they get initiated on all the time and they lose those team fights. I have the feeling that right now the momentum is in the favor of... Um, Pyro. Of Pyro, mm -hmm. even though KD managed to still hold the gold lead, but the the experience really shows something else, and the kill counter does as well. Yeah, but it, towers, oh towers. Yeah, uh, towers have actually almost equalized. We're still down two on the side of Pyro, but their kills are starting to make up for it a lot. I mean, the gold lead is you know it's been trimmed down even after that team fight. But while we have the chance, let's go a little bit over about who chose what for items. So you did mention that plate mail on that pebbles. It could become a frost field, could become the demonic. Although I don't really see too many, I mean, other than the, the dark lady for physical damage. I don't mm -hmm. know, do you think that a frost field would do a lot better there? Yeah, definitely, because actually the, at this point, then pebbles is the only blinker on their team. And he's going to be their main initiator. So... The Frosty Field Blade will just help him out um, initiating a lot more, but just want to go over items really quickly. Yep. Wretched Hack, for example, has picked up a Sheep Stick, so that's going to be a pre pretty big pickup for her. And, um, oh, Valkyrie. She just sleeps out. But, um. They get a little ahead <laughs> of me, but, uh. Yeah, sorry. We do, I'm at 3232, as we see basically everyone at low hit points. The Valkyrie ult will afford a little bit of time. Hey, gets kind of caught in the forest, but no death. Oh yeah, um, but the most thing that I just have spinning in my head, what is Forsaken Archie going to do with a glowstone? Uh, she doesn't, that's Andromeda, there we go. I was like, wait a second. Uh, glowstone could become a sacrificial, it looks like magics there really putting out the hurt as he was able to take down that Andromeda, but now we got Dark Lady in tow, and the auto attack is not going to be enough from Wretched Hag. They really desperately want to give this kill to that Dark Lady, and you could just see the hesitation in their eyes as they're waiting for her to pick it up. Uh, it looks like Dark Lady will not be going that rune axe whatsoever. She has now a firebrand. So. Yeah, right now at this point, the rune axe is completely pointless. Either you pick it up early or you don't pick it up at all. Mm -hmm. Normally, to play a Dark Lady effectively, you need the Rune Dax to just simply, you know, get your farmer. Right now, Dark Lady, however, is doing pretty well with 325 gold per minute. Not skyrocketing, but definitely doing a kind of solid 
farm, oh. and that shows because she now picks up a Frostburn. Yeah, she she's doubled her earlier gold per minute, so she's definitely picking up a lot in the terms of farm. She's up to 138 creep kills, not exactly the farming machine that that level 20 Forsaken Archer has afforded herself. 232, that's a lot. And 214 now sitting on black, a full 